Right, welcome to Sky Sports News. We're going to start with a harrowing report into the abuse of British gymnasts, which has just been released. The White Review, which is more than 300 pages long and has taken almost two years to produce, has examined over 400 complaints which uncovered an unacceptable abusive culture that has left countless young people humiliated, shamed and permanently, psychologically or physically damaged by their time in the sport. These are the main findings then. Athletes were often punished with physical activity as punishment. One gymnast reported being made to stand on a beam for two hours because she was frightened to attempt a particular skill. Pain was also inflicted for poor performance. 90 submissions were received describing the deprivation of water, food or access to a toilet during training sessions. Gymnasts were told they would get heavier in training if they drank water. Some coaches also prohibited food during long training sessions, with gymnasts reporting having their food confiscated or withheld until they'd completed the required number of clean routines. The White Review also heard of numerous reports of gymnasts being punished by being isolated, humiliated, belittled or ignored in response to perceived failures. Examples include making gymnasts who couldn't compete and move to train with younger gymnasts, with one teenage gymnast being forced to train and line up with preschool class. Children were punished for crying in class, with some often made to watch themselves cry in front of a mirror. There was excessive weight management as well. Many have reported long-term health issues, including mental health issues and eating disorders, as a result of oppressive weighing activities and excessive dietary restrictions. Gymnasts reported being lined up and picked out of line to be weighed if they looked fatter, being forced to perform extra conditioning immediately after failing a weight target, asked to send photographs of themselves in order to prove that they'd lost weight and being made to wear ankle weights during training to represent the weight they put on. The review suggests overstretching had at times resulted in pain and distress for the gymnasts, sometimes to the point of tears and injury, with coaches using the force of their own weight to extend a particular physical stretch. One individual reported that her coach had sat on her when she was seven years old and her parent reported two coaches at once pushing their child's legs down into splits. The CEOs from UK Sport and Sport England have been giving their reactions to the hugely disturbing findings from this report. Today's report is a distressing and harrowing read and I think it's appropriate to thank the gymnasts that have come forward and had the courage to share their stories and for that I really thank them for doing so. I believe that their courage will affect change in the future. At UK Sport, we do not accept the notion that um, there has been uh, a priority across the system for medals over other things. The report that Anne White has delivered today makes clear that the number of gymnasts have experienced abuse that they should never have experienced. No one in sport should experience that type of abuse. What the report also does is acknowledges that improvements have been made since 2017. So when we were first talking about another sport like cycling, that a number of improvements have been made since then. She points to some of the systems and processes that are in place that have helped identify some of the abuse that has happened. And I think what's really important is that those that have contributed to the evidence for this report know that their voices have been heard and that it will affect positive change moving forwards. I think I'd like to say for, for British Gymnastics it's very clear uh, what the recommendations in the report need to deliver. I think also the report is clear that they see she sees and White sees positive change already happening in the sport. I think this is an enormous moment uh, for the sport, but also for all of us involved in, in creating opportunities for people to feel the wonder and the joy of being active and playing sport at any level. And when that is compromised or where that is challenged, then we need uh, to, to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make it safe, welcoming and inclusive. And there's more work that can be done, 
but today is a really important moment for acknowledging that. As Anne White has explained in the report, improvements have been made, but what she also identifies is that there is more that can be done. There are 17 clear recommendations for British gymnastics, which we will oversee, making sure that they deliver against. Further to that, myself and Tim, as the chief execs of the funding bodies, will take time now to really look if there is other things that we can be doing over the course of the next period to make greater change, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Well, it's undoubtedly the case that our uh, relationship with British Gymnastics and our funding f of British Gymnastics at the moment is really important. We need to give them the capacity and the resources to make the change uh, that Anne White identifies and do so in a timescale that fits uh, to that which she has recommended. The, op but the opportunity we have always uh, with the investment that we make is help effect positive change within a sport. We've seen that happen on many occasions. The funding is there to support the sport to move forward. If the sport isn't moving forward, if it isn't affecting changes, if the situation hasn't been improved, then clearly we would need to review that. But today, the issue is, can we help the sport to make the changes we want, it, we want them to make? And is it, in, is it clear and in place what the timetable for those changes should be? And we will make sure that we're considering our funding against that. This is a huge day for gymnastics and also for sport, I think. We've waited two years almost for the White Review, but we've been waiting decades for some of these things, these experiences to be validated and for them to be addressed so that we can have a safe um, sport as how it should be. And you, you've competed at the very top level in gymnastics and like everyone, you have an individual story of your time in, in the sport. Has it shocked you kind of just how widespread and how repeated these instances of emotional and physical abuse have been? Um, because it shocked me really <laughs> today. And, uh, yeah. It, but it, it became the norm almost? Would that, would that yes. Be Sadly, it's really not that shocking to someone like me. And for Gymnasts for Change, we've heard so many testimonials over the past couple of years. Um, but even before that, I think a lot of people in the community knew how bad the culture was. But the fact that it was so normalised and the fact that there was that culture of fear prevented it from kind of being released. So on a day like today, we can finally admit how bad it was, we can hopefully move forward and um, have that never happen again. What does that progress look like from your point of view from now? Um, the progress, the cultural change needed is huge. It's so many deeply ingrained issues across the sport. Um, so it doesn't just look like one particular thing, but um, it looks like coaches and gymnasts and parents having an open and transparent relationship, having trust, um, and having gymnasts and athletes' voices be at the centre of the sport, um, it means the change looks like gymnast voices being at the centre and health and well-being at the centre alongside performance, not performance coming first. Because you read the examples of what has happened, and it is child abuse, isn't it? It's absolutely child abuse. I've seen comments online, people saying, oh, they're just not tough enough, they don't understand what it takes to be an elite athlete. It's absolutely uncalled for. As you can see from the testimonials in this report, we're talking about serious physical, in 40% of the cases in the White Review, physical abuse, emotional, psychological abuse that leads to serious trauma, eating disorders and PTSD, and in some cases, sexual abuse. This is not tough coaching, this is an epidemic of abuse that we're talking about. And do you now have more confidence in British gymnastics and the sporting authorities in the UK that actual effectual change is the only option? Change is the only option. I would at the moment not put my future children in the sport and how can we have a sport that isn't safe for children? 95% of the participants and members of British gymnastics are children under the age of 18. Um, so we absolutely cannot have a sport in this country that's not safe for those people and I want children like my cousins who are involved in the sport to feel safe, to feel happy and to have all the best experience of the, of the sport um, because it can teach you such amazing things being part of the sport and being part of gymnastics but when it's you know not a safe place to be um, it just you can't risk that. Right, well, Sarah Powell, who took the job of Chief Executive of British Gymnastics in 2021 after Jane Allen retired in the wake of these findings, has offered a full apology. 
the practices, she says, of the past are not going to be the practices of the future. I think this is a watershed moment, she says, for safeguarding, not just in gymnastics, but in all sports. This is, she says, a genuine apology. We have to set a new path. Gymnastics will be very different because of the bravery, as we just heard, of those who've spoken up. So she's vowing to try and rid the sport of abusive coaches. We've just managed to grab a moment with Sarah Powell. Let's hear what she's had to say. How I react is by being really clear there is no room for any form of abuse. It's clear in the review from Anne White that we talk about ranges of abuse and there is no abuse accepted within British gymnastics going forward. We have to be really clear about the standards that we expect and that's both in coaching and both in our environments to make sure that we rebuild trust with the gymnasts and that they are able to come forward and talk to us and if they have complaints that they can raise them. The culture has been so widespread that it's hard to believe that any governing body can get to a point where this has gone on for so long and that these things have just been tolerated and families have had to go through really difficult trauma because of the sport that they love. Yeah, and I'm not going to shy away from that. It, it's laid bare the issues that we need to now face and, and we need to be really open about that and to work with the gymnasts and the community to make sure we put in place all the reforms that are needed and are set out, not just in Anne White's report, but we need to look root and branch across our sport to make sure that I can come back here and say that our sport now is one that actually is a positive environment for all. How many coaches have been punished after the fact that th this has come to light now in such stark examples that have been put forward that clearly overstepped the line massively. Yeah, the key thing here is that complaints around coaches are raised and that we deal with these fairly and robustly and if sanctions are right and coaches need to be removed, they are removed and that we're very clear about that and people see that. Coaching is going to be a huge focus for me. We need to look at our coach education. We need to make sure that we have the right courses in place, which are both a mix of technical, but also much more around understanding maturation, understanding weight management, bringing experts in to develop a new coach, edu coach education programme. Your sport and the negligence of those at your organisation before you joined have contributed to lives being shattered and people suffering from eating disorders, from PTSD. It's extraordinary what has been laid bare today. What for you is the most shocking part of this report? There's too many shocking parts to this report and it, and it clearly shows that it's not just one thing that I'm going to have to get right. I'm going to have to look at so many different elements. I mentioned coaching, that's really important. The culture so that people can speak up. I need to work with parents so that they have an understanding of what's expected both you know, within the environment, but I need to put the gymnast very much at the centre of the solutions going forward. No coaches, as we know, have yet been punished. Does that have to happen to enable the sport to move on? We have to have the right coaches with the right cultural attitudes to move forward. So if there are coaches that don't have that, then they must be removed from our sport. And what do you say to the parents of a seven-year-old boy or girl today who is going to a gymnastics club tonight, fearing now the culture they're stepping into? Well, I say I hope you're not fearing it. It's really clear within the review that the, the vast majority of gymnastics is, is delivered in a really positive environment. It is a great experience. It's really important, our sport. That's why I've become the CEO. Physical literacy, those first introductory moments. And I want children to come and enjoy gymnastics and make sure that they have that great experience. And if they can, they go on to international success. I say to those parents, please get involved, understand the culture within your club and make sure that that is a positive and safe one for all of your children and enjoy our sport. And finally, British Gymnastics has been singled out here as a failing organisation, one that's been insular and focused on financial rewards rather than the culture within the sport. Is it fit for purpose? It needs huge reform and I'm here to lead that reform and, and I am committed to doing that. I will take all of the recommendations from Anne White's review and I will look wider than that to make sure that this sport is fit for purpose going forward.
Okay, Sarah Powell there. Well, here are the Whites Reviews Reform recommendations. The safeguarding and welfare of gymnasts, which includes to reassess the level of responsibility delegated to volunteers in the sport and employ sufficient staff with appropriate professional expertise. Plus, offer high-performance gymnasts and their parents access to an independent disclosure service and dedicated welfare officer. Next, complaints handling. Ensure the system for complaints is fit for purpose, requires all clubs to have a complaints policy for safeguarding concerns and ensure all welfare-related complaints about employed coaches are independently investigated. There should be a director of education to oversee the education and training of coaches. A gymnast handbook should also be produced, which would be updated at least every four years and must include policies with clear guidance on what conduct is and is not acceptable in the sport. And finally, the British Gymnastics Board will be responsible for implementing these recommendations and should publish progress updates at 6, 12 and 24 months. They should appoint independent board members with relevant professional expertise in safeguarding and athlete welfare, plus introduce pathways to ensure views and interests of athletes and parents, patterns in complaints and performance in complaint handling are known to the board. She also recommended the creation of a sports ombudsman.